Hi everyone, this is the Backstage TV and my today's host, Joachim Broden from Sabaton. Hi! Hello! How, uh, how are you? Very good, thank you. And you? Uh, I'm good, uh, but I think you can say the check. Oh! Jak se máte? Jak se máš? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's okay, that's okay. This is the second part of your tour. Yeah. And today, Ostrava. So, uh, what can we expect? A totally new show compared to last time. Yes, I'm so happy we managed to squeeze in and change everything. Set list is very different, obviously, because we have more songs released now. And uh, a totally different uh, production because we go on... Uh, it's quite a lot of countries and... Uh, with that, we can string a big production together and bring it on the road. So we are actually, in total, 12 trucks and nine tour buses going on tour, yeah. And by the way, uh, why Ostrava this time? Uh, we feel like, we, we, even though we love Prague, we need to play other cities as well, you know. And uh, I think it's uh, easy for all bands to fall into this trap, that you go back to the same cities always. And it's not always for easy for everyone to travel, you know? Uh, if you go to, let's say, if you go into the UK and you only play London, it's gonna be tricky for the people in Scotland to see the show. Uh, you are very popular in the uh, Czech Republic, that's true, that's true. Can you feel it uh, during a concert in Czech? Yeah, I, I love to play here. Uh, it's uh, a good atmosphere in the crowd, people are happy, and it's not it's a good action without becoming crazy. People aren't getting hurt, you know? Singing. People singing and all ages, young people, old people, and that's a really nice vibe, you know? Uh, your album, The Last Stand, uh, got the golden record in Czech Republic, and many people, many people came to your show in Prague 2017. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, what is the, one of the biggest show in the Sabaton history? At that point, I think it was the biggest show. And then I think again in 2020, when we played, the, I think it was the O2 in Prague. The, that was also the biggest Sabaton headline show in history, actually. Yes, okay. Your last album uh, is out for more than a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do you read it now? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, do, do you think you could have done uh, differently? Yes and no. I mean, we could have timed the release a little bit better. It came at the same time as an invasion. <laughs> uh, but we obviously didn't know that. Uh, but uh, musically, no, because for us it felt like the whole pandemic stopped us from touring on the Great War album, the previous album. And we knew there were sev several territories, Latin America, Japan, Australia, that we didn't go to on that tour. Uh, so we th realized also we had stories we wanted to tell, like the Christmas Truce, Harlem Hellfighters, the First Soldier. Uh, so there were a lot of stories we sort of we had to leave behind. Christmas Truce is uh, great. Uh, it's a great. Thank you. Uh, and the video was uh, shooting in Czech Republic. It was shooting in Czech Republic. Yeah. Yes, and now you've got a new video. Yeah. And uh, this is the Motorheads cover. Yeah. Why this one? Because it's about World War One, and I think it's one of Lemmy's best lyrics he ever did. I mean, people, I think the original, when people think of it as a song, I think they're making it, you know, injustice in a way. I think it's more like a poem with music. Yes. And, and uh, what does Morihan mean to you? Oh, rock and roll. I mean, if, if you know, one thing, if there was ever one band that says rock and roll, nothing else, rock and roll, it's Motorhead. Your uh, last two records were made in the spirit of uh, World War I. Mm -hmm. uh, what we can expect next on the next album? I wish I could tell you, because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we have, we have many ideas, uh, probably five or six themes we could go with. Um, I don't want to reveal which one, not because I want to be secretive, but before, you know, in the past we have said what we planned on doing, and then we, music went somewhere else, and we did something else, and then a lot of people were disappointed. And we don't want to disappoint people, we want to make people happy, you know. Do you remember a lot of school, or uh, do you have to study a lot? <laughs> oh, I, I have to study a lot. Uh, I mean, obviously, some things you remember. 6th of June, 1944, D-Day, yes. But... Uh, over the years now, we've been doing military history for almost two decades. And there is 
so many songs we wrote like 18 years ago or something like that. And I remember when I did the lyrics, I knew not everything, but a lot about that battle. And today I only remember what's in the lyrics almost because I've, I've read so much other military history that your brain just has to clean it out. So about the recording process, uh, what's the first, lyrics or music? Uh, m usually music first, uh, but with an idea of what the song is going to be about. But the lyrics usually come later. Sometimes though they come at the same time. And in one case, I think that we started with lyrics, but that's very uncommon for us. Okay, so now uh, I've got uh, some uh, simple questions for you and cool. I want uh, simple answers. Okay. First, where is the best beer? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very simple question <laughs> and you'll get a very simple answer. <laughs> Czech Republic. Uh, that's right. We've got a really <laughs> good beer. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, you can look at our riders, that's Pilsner Urkel. If we're in the United States or if we're in Argentina or the UK, we want Pilsner Urkel. That's okay. <laughs> that, that's the, your favorite movie? Maybe not a movie, but a series, Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers, okay. Uh, your favorite sport? Ooh, ice hockey. Ice hockey, and team? What team? Uh, what team? Le Lexans EF, Swedish league. Yes, yes, Swedish league is uh, very, very good. Pretty good, I yeah. Know, I know that. Okay, uh, music you know, who influenced you most? From a songwriter and singer perspective, I guess, when I was younger, uh, D. Schneider from Twisted Sister. And he's still uh, rocking. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's still. He's still singing fantastic. Back to your tour. Uh, is it a problem to arrange the playlist because you have uh, many great hits? It's getting tougher every day. Uh, you always have to find a mix where something old, something new and fan favorites and uh, but we do it differently on a headline tour like this we focus a lot on world war one because you know we had the two albums are on that with a few of course greatest hits around it but if we come for a festival it's more like a party set because different vibe this tour uh, you have invited the lordy and uh, baby metal uh, why these groups i don't know really exactly the uh, why people didn't expect that. I mean, we played with Lordi, old friends. With the, we supported them in 2006. With Baby Metal, we supported them in Japan in 2018, I think it was, yeah. And uh, we loved both bands, both the people and the crew around them. And I think both are heavily underrated in Europe. I mean, obviously, Baby Metal is massive <laughs> in Japan. But in Europe, I think a lot of people have uh, sort of disregarded them because they're culturally and what they're doing is weird to us if you're not used to it. And Lordi is a great rock band, but I think they are suffering because people just think that's the Eurovision monsters. Yes. They forget it's actually a good rock band, you know. Okay, uh, finally, uh, what about your plans to the future? Uh, Personally and Sabaton. Personally, I'm looking forward to have a, a little bit of a slower summer. We have some shows, but we don't do very many shows this summer because then we are gearing up to make more music. This is like weird. We are not, it doesn't feel like work. I'm looking forward to having an easy summer, but then I'm looking forward to starting writing more music for the future. I can't really, we don't have a release date yet. Uh, we don't work uh, that hard on it, but uh, it's gonna be good, you know, without any pressure. I'll drive over and me and Chris will sit down, we'll have a few beers and collect all our ideas and write some music. It's, it's a nice thing to do, actually. And one more thing, the future of the Sabaton Open Air? Ah, we don't know yet, actually. Uh, with the pandemic coming out, it was tricky for us to put the festival on. Even though we had the biggest and most successful year, in many ways, behind the scenes it was really tricky because a lot of people had left the business. I mean, everybody was talking about the artists during COVID, but people forgot about, no matter if it was a rock band or theater, a lot of people who were working behind the scenes and not being on the stage has left the business. And it's super sad because they were not very well treated by a lot of governments around the world. So um, 
it was tricky for us to put, get the right people in the right place to put on the festival. And uh, we managed to save it. It went off very well, but we, we're going to have to wait until we can put it back up again and do it really, really good. Because our goal with that festival was never to be the biggest festival, but the goal was to be the nicest festival for the visitors, for the bands. That the whole idea is like you're go you, you want to buy a ticket and you don't even know the bands because it's just a, such a great time to be there. Uh, but until we can make sure that happens, I think we're going to have to put it on, on pause as well. So, I thank you very much for your time. I wish you good luck to thank you and to Sabaton and enjoy the show. Thank I you. will. I'll be drinking Czech beer on stage. I'm getting paid to drink Czech <laughs> beer on stage. Life could be worse. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you very much. <laughs>